symbol of ours In the name of peace we gather here now Oh Lord, please make these days of ours On this earth filled with peace Peace TV, peace for the peace solution for, for humanity السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو I welcome all of you to this exclusive program TV talk shows and analysis I Dr. Muhammad Naik am your host and moderator for this program we have with us Dr. Zakir Naik Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik President of the Islamic Research Foundation is renowned as a dynamic international orator on Islam and comparative religion. Dr. Zakir is famous for his critical analysis to challenging questions posed by audiences after his public talks. In the last 13 years, he has delivered over 1,300 public talks worldwide. He has successfully participated in dialogues and debates with prominent personalities of other faiths. His public dialogue with Dr. William Campbell of USA in Chicago on April 1st 2000 was a resounding success in presenting the compatibility of Quran with established science. His interfaith dialogue with the famous Indian guru C.C. Ravi Shankar on the topic the concept of God in Hinduism and Islam in the light of sacred scriptures held in Bangalore on 21st January 2006 was very well appreciated for propounding the oneness of God Almighty. The Indian Express included Dr. Zakir Naik in its list of the 100 most powerful Indians in 2009 as well as in 2010 amongst the billion plus population of India. He was ranked as the third most powerful spiritual guru after Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and Baba Ramdev in 2009 and this year, in 2010, he superseded them too. Dr. Zakir appears regularly on many international TV channels throughout the world. He is the spirit and brain behind Peace TV, which is watched worldwide by over 100 million viewers. Dr. Zakir Naik stood out most eloquently for Islam and Muslims in his TV talk show, Walk the Talk, conducted by Shekhar Gupta, Editor-in-Chief of Indian Express, on the NDTV program, Walk the Talk, aired on 7th and 8th of March, 2009. Dr. Zakir Naik appears regularly on many international TV channels in over 200 countries worldwide. Hundreds of his talks, dialogues, and debates are available on VCDs and DVDs. He has authored books on Islam and comparative religion. Peace TV, his brainchild, has become one of his most impactful, unmitigated and far-reaching phenomena worldwide in creating a better awareness of Islam and removing misconceptions about Islam. The ever-increasing over 100 million viewers, avid viewers of Peace TV, are evolving into mass defenders of the true, just and peaceful Islamic message for humanity at large and challenging the negative stereotyping of Islam and Muslims worldwide by some powerful corporate media, anti-Islamic governments and vested interests. As far as our topic for today goes, TV talk shows. A dictionary meaning of a TV talk show is a program during which well-known people discuss a topic or answer questions asked or telephoned in by the audience. We start today's program 
by asking our guest tonight, Dr. Zakir Naik, directly about the differences of these various talks and the formats they tend to follow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to our show, Dr. Zakir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's my pleasure. Our audience here and all over who respect you so much would first of all like to be clear on this concept. What is the difference between a TV interview, a panel discussion, a TV talk show and a TV talk? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmain amma abad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح صدري وسلي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني أفكا وكولي As far as the difference is concerned between a TV talk or a TV interview or a panel discussion or a TV talk show is that a TV talk is just a continuous talk given by a speaker or a specialist or a celebrity in front of a camera He has got no audience He's directly facing the camera and there's no interruption whatsoever. As far as the TV interview is concerned, it is an interview taken by a host of a celebrity or a specialist in that field. The host asks questions to the celebrity or to the specialist and replies to the queries or the questions asked by the host. As far as the panel discussion is concerned, there are a few people on the panel, maybe two, three, four, five or many. All of them may be specialists concerning the subject in discussion or in the panel there may be two groups one may be opposing the subject one may be in favor of the subject this is a panel discussion and there is a moderator and this moderator sees to it that he gives equal opportunity to all the panelists and he gets the best out of the show as far as a TV talk show is concerned it has evolved recently in the past few decades after the television media has expanded and in a TV talk show it's a mixture in a TV talk show, it may be a host who is interviewing the celebrity or the specialist. And while in interviewing, there may be a group of audience that is listening live. Or he can throw the floor open to the people to ask questions on the phone line. If it's a live TV talk show, there can be people who are asking questions on the telephone. Or a TV talk show can be a panel discussion. There can be a few people who are there on the panel. And the moderator, he asks questions to the panelist, whether they belong to the same view or they may belong to opposing view and while he's asking question to the panelist there may be a live audience which is watching they too can take part in that tv talk show or the tv talk show can be thrown open to the people if it's a live tv talk show to the people who are watching so that they can ask questions on the telephone so these are basically the difference between a tv interview tv talk a panel discussion and tv talk shows jazakallah for that uh, basic clarification do you personally prefer taking part in a TV interview, a panel discussion, a TV talk show, a TV talk or a public lecture to present your viewpoint and why? If you give me the option amongst all six, the best I would like is a public lecture and second I would like is a TV talk. The reason is because in a public lecture and in a TV talk there is no interruption. I can present my view without being interrupted because normally if a host is there or if a moderator is there there are chances depending upon the moderator I may be able to present my view I may not be able to present my view depending upon the intentions etc I prefer a public lecture and a TV talk as compared to the other three four if you had a choice to take part in a public lecture or a TV talk which would you prefer and why compared to a public lecture and a TV talk but natural I prefer a public lecture because a public lecture normally is in front of an audience so but natural the impact of a speaker is higher speaking in front of a camera looks like you're speaking in front of a wall so I prefer personally speaking in public giving a live lecture but natural duration is longer it can be maybe of half an hour or one hour or one and a half hour that's much better because in a public lecture normally I stand in a TV talk you have to sit normally so you can stand and also give a TV talk and in a public lecture it is much more interesting because you get the reaction of the audience. So when you get the reaction of the audience, the impact and the presentation of a speaker is better. And today scientific research tells us that when a person gives a public speech or a lecture, 
93 percent depends on his presentation skills and 7 percent is the matter 7 percent of the marks of the public lecture goes to the content to the matter of what he speaks 93 percent is the presentation skills but natural which involves body language which involves modulation gestures eye to eye contact because when a person speaks even his eye is speaking even his hand is speaking so i personally prefer a public lecture in which a person can present better he can see the reaction of an audience as compared to a tv talk which is speaking in front of a camera dr zakir you have delivered over a thousand public lectures worldwide how many tv talks have you delivered but naturally the maximum that i've given in my life is public lectures as far as tv talks are concerned maybe a few hundred i don't know the number but it will be few hundred maybe three four hundred tv talks i've given alhamdulillah does that mean that you prefer giving lectures and tv talks only and avoid being questioned no as far as being questioned I prefer the question and answer better than the public lecture. But being questioned by an interviewer and a moderator is different by being questioned by the public. I prefer being questioned by a questioner. That's the reason whenever I give a public talk, I prefer that the question and answer session is longer than the public lecture. Because a public talk or a public lecture is a monologue. It's a one-way traffic. In a question and answer session, it's a two-way traffic. It's much more interesting for the audience as well as for me. And it's challenging for me that I don't know what question the person is going to ask. So I prefer a question answer session much better than a TV talk. And that is the reason when we handle question answer session, when the program is organized by us or when I'm called by the host, I tell them, I prefer the questions asked live. I don't prefer chits because when someone gives chits, you know, there are chances if you get maybe 30, 40, 100 questions, you can select what you want to answer. And then the audience may feel that, you know, some questions Akira has answered, some he has an answered. So I normally prefer that in a question answer session, the questioner lines up behind the microphone and he asks the question live. So no one can say that I'm selecting what I want to answer. So whoever is first in the queue, in the microphone, he is the person who gets the chance. And I personally prefer giving an opportunity first to the non-Muslims, then to the Muslims, because they have a better right to know about Islam than the person who already is a Muslim. So that is the reason we prefer giving chance and opportunity to the non-Muslims. And I enjoy a question answer session much more than the lecture. How many TV interviews, panel discussions, or TV talk shows have you taken part in and why? As far as TV interviews are concerned, that also may be a few hundred TV interviews. As far as panel discussions are concerned, I don't know the exact number, or maybe 50. Same with TV talk shows. I have attended many TV talk shows which are live. And I always prefer attending a TV talk show which is broadcast live, which is telecast live, in which a person's view cannot be edited. So I prefer attending TV talk shows which are broadcast live rather than which are recorded and telecast later after a few days, after a few weeks. As far as panel discussions are concerned, maybe 30, 40, I don't know the exact number, but close to that. Dr. Zakir, is it right, as most people presume, that you prefer appearing only on Muslim television channels? Yes, as you asked me that, what is the reason that I prefer speaking on a talk show and a public lecture as compared to giving an interview or having a panel discussion? Where an interview is concerned, normally it also depends upon the intention and the integrity of the person taking the interview. And that more so ever is important in a panel discussion. The moderator is very important because if the intentions and the integrity of the moderator are not correct, then there are high chances that the things you speak can be moderated or it can be rather misrepresented. So what I really say that the difference between a TV talk and a TV interview is that in a TV interview, the person asking your question can ask you leading questions, which I've got no problem with, but sometimes they may not give you a chance to complete the answer. But a TV interview is far more safer than a panel discussion and a TV talk show. Because in a panel discussion, since there are many speakers who are there on the panel, maybe three, four or more than that, here the intention and the integrity of the moderator as well as the producer of the show is important. Because 
if the moderator wants to promote a particular viewpoint which he prefers, he can give more chance to the panelist whose view he agrees with. And there are high chances that he can cut short the answer of the panelist who he doesn't agree with. So therefore, in a panel discussion, when the people are watching at home on the television, if they're not aware of the media, how the media works, they may not know what goes behind the scene. So the moderator can sway the panel discussion. And secondly, it's also important the view, the integrity, and the intention of the producer of the show. Because if the intention of the producer of the show is not correct, and he wants to promote a view, even if on the panel, if there's an expert who can prove the viewpoint of the producer wrong, in the post-production, he can edit the portion which he feels is going against his view. So when you see a TV talk show, you have to keep in mind that what is the integrity and the intention of the producer and the moderator. Because if you doubt the intention of the producer and the moderator and the integrity, what you see finally on the television in the TV talk show or the panel discussion can be edited. And there are many instances we can give where we can prove that how it can be done. For example, when you're taking an interview, and suppose someone asked me that what are your views regarding the policies of George Bush? And suppose if I reply that I do not agree with the policies of George Bush. In the post-production, you can easily edit do not. And it will sound in the show, I am saying I agree with the policies of George Bush. Actually, I said, I do not agree with the policies of George Bush. But on the show, it will appear that Zakir Naik is saying, by editing do not, I agree with the policies of George Bush. And if a person who is being interviewed, if he does not know the background of the media, and if he is shown his own interview, he may think, okay, it was a slip of the tongue. He may think, okay, by mistake I said, I agree with the policies of George Bush. So if you show his own interview, and if he does not know how the post-production is done, he will think it was a slip of the tongue. Actually, it wasn't a slip of the tongue. So that is the reason the integrity of the producer of the show and the moderator is very important. And this can even happen more in a panel discussion, where what can be done, that parts of the other panelists can be shown along with the person who you differ with. And he can be made to appear that he is agreeing with the view of the producer of the moderator. So therefore, a panel discussion is more dangerous as compared to a plain TV interview. So that's the reason I personally prefer giving a public lecture and a TV talk as compared to appearing on a TV interview or a panel discussion or TV talk show. But between the three, as I mentioned, I prefer a TV interview because there's less chances of editing. And even after you edit, if you have said everything correctly, there's less chance of manipulation. But if the intention of the moderator or the person who's the host who's taking the interview or the intention of the producer is evil, then there is little chance that you can undo it. In a panel discussion, the moderator has more flexibility of putting down the person he wants to put down and uplifting a person who he wants to uplift. So a panel discussion, I personally prefer being out of a panel discussion unless I'm sure that the integrity of the moderator and the person who's conducting the show and the producer, it is honest and I believe in it. I normally prefer staying out of panel discussions. Jazakallah, Dr. Zakir, for explaining that point. Uh, we understand this integrity and intention are very vital for you, but we are ultimately human. We may err in this judgment. Ultimately, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is absolute in this kind of understanding. Dr. Zakir, on how many non-Islamic Indian television channels have you appeared on for TV interviews, panel discussions, or TV talk shows? And what is your experience about these appearances? As far as appearing on non-Muslim TV channels for TV interviews, for TV talk shows, the panel discussion, I have attended more of the foreign ones foreign TV channels than Indian TV channels. Many times in 
UK, in South Africa, in USA, in many countries, in different parts of the world. As far as Indian TV channels are concerned, as far as my memory goes, maybe I've attended approximately five. I remember the first one that I attended was a talk show conducted by Farooq Sheikh. And the program was Mard. And the topic of that program was BV Hoto Kaisi. You know, that was the first one I attended. And the second one that I remember is I had a panel discussion. It was a live show done by CNN IBN. And I was in the Bombay studios of CNN IBN. And there were two panelists from Delhi. That was the second one. And third one, as far as memory goes, was a TV interview that was conducted by RK Bajaj on the RKB show. That's on Sahara channel. And the fourth one, again, I think, was the TV interview. It was a different type on Walk the Talk by Shekhar Gupta, who is the editor-in-chief of Indian Express on NDTV. And the last one recently, just two weeks back, or rather three weeks back, it was eight, two weeks back, on the NDTV. And the program was We the People, which was conducted by Barakadat. And the topic was Muslim identity. So these were the five programs as far as memory goes. Means only five programs you appeared on. All these years with uh, thousands of lectures on one side and only five programs. If you ask... You got an opportunity I've, only for that. I've been asked hundreds of times, hundreds of times to appear for talk shows and for panel discussions, at least few hundred, by many channels. You name the channels, you could say easily, most of the channels that have talk shows. I've been asked to appear on many of them at least a few hundred times. But personally knowing that because I already do come on various other satellite channels, I don't want my views to be changed or to be altered. Because of that, I know what the background is. And I personally, I personally don't really think that most of the shows that take place are with the true intention of the topic. Because I doubt that since for a normal man is different, for me, since I'm a man of the media, and I appear on various satellite channels, and Peace TV alone, alhamdulillah, has a viewership of more than 100 million. And that is absolutely, it's a direct view, without the producer of these public lectures or TV shows, without altering the view. And I trust the integrity of the other Muslim channels. That's the reason, because I know that they will not change my view. I've appeared several times on Muslim channels. Because of that, I take care, because I had very bad experiences in these past few TV talk shows. So because of bad experiences, and when I speak to other people who have been on the show, they too have that. And I really agree with you when you said that we cannot actually judge one's integrity until we have proof for the same. Now, because I have spoken with other people who have been on the talk shows, I'm talking about those people who know the media. A person who does not know the media, and if he goes on a talk show, he will not know what goes behind the curtain. So once the talk show is aired, then you can say and be sure what was the integrity of the moderator and what was the integrity of the producer. For us, as uh, lay people, to understand how the TV talk shows and the interviews present your viewpoint properly on the positive side, and uh, manipulated on the other side. Uh, can you relate to us your experiences, you know, TV talk shows, maybe your first talk show with uh, Farooq Sheikh in brief? The first talk show I had, I don't remember the year exactly, somewhere I think close to the early part of the 2000, or late part of the 1990s. And that was the first TV talk show I attended in India. And as I told you, the program's name was Mard. And the topic of that show was Bibi Hotokaisi. And that called a Christian to represent their view. They called a Hindu. And they called myself. And they called an atheist. There were about four or five people in the panel. And there was an audience like the way we have here. And they asked that how should a woman be? How should she behave? And everyone gave their view, even I gave their view. And when I started speaking, and while I was convinced, when I give a reply, but naturally I give with reason and logic. So at the end of the show, the answer that I gave, most of the panelists agreed with it. Initially, they may have differed, but when I gave the reasoning that it's more important for a woman to look after children, look after the home, not that she can't work, 
as long as work is modest, she can go and work. And all these things, so the show went off very well. And the moderator, Farooq Sheikh, he was the gentleman. And I was very happy that the first show that I did on the Indian television channel, I was very happy, fine, I gave the answer, the audience questioned me, and they criticized me, they attacked me, I gave the reply. Now when I gave the reply, the other audience agreed with my reply. That's what I do normally in a live question and session. They ask me a question, I give a reply, and I'm giving the equal opportunity. And Farooq Sheikh did a good job. But the bombshell came later on. A few days later on, I got a call from the channel saying that the program did not end the way the producer wanted. So we are going to have a reshoot. So please wear the same suit, same shirt, same tie, same dress, and come for the show, we are having a reshoot. And when I got this message from my manager, I said, this is nonsense. Program was fine. There's no problem in it. So he told that, surely we won't be coming, because we felt the program went perfectly fine. So they had the reshoot in the same studio, in the same setup. Maybe all the other panelists came, but I did not go. Maybe most of the audience came. They had a reshoot, and after a couple of weeks, they had that aired on the television satellite channel. And the best part of it was, when anyone sees the show, they are seeing me sitting there, nodding the head many a time to things which I did not nod at. So what they did, they reshot the whole thing and they changed the view. Though I did not go the second time, but when they telecast it on air, it was shown as though it was shot once and Dr. Zakir Naik was there and was agreeing with the wrong things also. So this shows that the integrity of the producer was absolutely unjust. I don't blame the moderator. I mean, Farooq Sheikh, I can't blame him, he's being paid for a job. He did a good job initially. What he did next, I don't know, so I can't comment on that. But the end of the story is that when it was aired, it was made to look that Dr. Zakir Naik, fine, I did speak, and they showed portions of my answers which suited them more than the other part. But when it was aired on the channel, it was shown many a time that the views that I did not agree with, I was shown that as well I agreed with it. So this is what I mean by saying the integrity is very important. So what I say that these shows, the producer and the moderator, they are doing it for their living. I am not giving a speech for my living. I am not here to speak about Islam for my living. I don't take a single penny from anyone. In fact, we give. You know? So because it is a bread and butter, many a time, the producer, they make a show which is liked more by the audience. They are more bothered about making what will sell more or will have a higher TRP rather than to know what is the truth. Same thing with the moderator. If the moderator is commanded by the producer and he chooses the moderator, the moderator has little say in it. Or if the producer is neutral and the moderator wants to change the show, the moderator can change the show and the producer doesn't bother. So therefore both are important, the moderator as well as the person who is the producer. So the first show I had went off very well. But the end result, because they reshot it, it was a disaster. But then you again trusted CNN IBN for another program. That's Your right. Experience on that, that was after many years. I don't know when I, I think I gave it after maybe seven, eight years after I appeared for the first show. I think it was maybe 2007, I believe, when I went for the CNN IBN show. And your experience on that? There, because it was a live panel discussion. And the issue, I think, was something to do with Muslims. I don't remember the main topic of that. It was done by... Rajdeep Sardesai. Rajdeep Sardesai. And Rajdeep Sardesai, he was sitting in Delhi. And there were a few panelists in Delhi. One of them, as my memory goes, was the MP. I forgot the name. Who was the editor of the Muslim India. Sayed Shabuddin. Sayed Shabuddin, correct. Sayed Shabuddin was there. And there were other couple of people in Delhi. And I was alone in Bombay. That too was not a good experience because... I was hardly allowed to speak only twice. And when I said something, it wasn't heard there because the microphone is in their hand. So though it was a live show, I could only speak when I was allowed to speak. See, normally in a panel discussion, live when I speak, the microphone is on, no one can cut me. But here I was in Bombay, they were in Delhi. And I was hearing from the headphone, which was through a mobile, I think, I don't know. So there were questions asked, though it was a live show. It was a live show. They were telecast live, 
But because of this problem that my microphone didn't work until they pressed the button. So there too, it was a good experience. But because it was live, it didn't do much damage. Only thing that, fine, Dr. Zakir Naik didn't say much or wasn't given a portion since it was a live show. It was being telecast live. Because of that, I felt that there wasn't much damage except that I was not given enough opportunity. Uh, they say twice hurt, uh, third time shy. But then again you jumped into the ring. You went in and you appeared on the Rashtra Sahara's RKB show. And its host, you know, uh, RK Bajaj, uh, most people believe uh, he is usually very critical about Muslims. That's what I understand. Why? The reason I jumped for the third time was, it was an interview. The first two, the first was a panel discussion or a talk show with the live audience. They will telecast later on. The second was a live telecast. So both were bad experiences. The third was a TV interview. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that in a TV interview, less damage can be done, but damage can be done. So initially, I refused. But when I came to know it's a live telecast, then I thought, fine, the damage that can be done is less. They cannot edit my speech. So because it was a live telecast, and whatever that I was saying in the studios of Sahara, it was going live, I did not mind attending it, even though it was RKB. And I should say that, though Mr. RK Bajaj did ask questions and tried to promote a view which he knows will create differences in the Muslim audience, and he did ask such questions, but because it was live, overall the show was good, because I could answer what I wanted to answer, and there was no editing post show. So based on that, I went for the RKB show the third time. And then last year, uh, we had Shekhar Gupta, the editor-in-chief of Indian Express, interviewing you on his very famous show, Walk the Talk. Uh, was it because uh, you were selected among the 100 most powerful Indians uh, by the Indian Express? 100 most powerful Indians? That or some other reasons you agreed to go on his interview? And what, what was the experience there? See, normal my answer when anyone wants to take my interview. Fine, as you asked me, Indian channels have appeared. These are the exclusive TV interviews I'm talking about. There are many snippets I've given to various other Indian channels which I have to give earlier on ETV, Urdu and many other snippets. You know, asking my view on certain issues. Even that, I stopped now. Because when I give an answer for five minutes, they edit one minute and show. So besides these five, I've been on many other Indian channels. But mainly these are small comments on certain issues taking place, whether it be on education for Muslims or whether such topics. Coming to this, why did I accept the interview? Especially because Shekhar Gupta puts many a prime minister and top leaders of the world in a very hot seat. That's why we are, we are asking you this special so question. So the first time when they asked me to appear for the interview, my answer was no. But then my colleagues and my friends told, you know, that Shekhar Gupta walked the talk is one of the best interviews that is held in the country. It has the highest TRP and I, because I don't watch much of the channels, though I'm a man of the media, I appear on TV channels, but I personally don't watch much of television. I did not know what was Walk the Talk until my friends and my colleagues, they told me, it is a very important interview conducted. It's one of the best in which the editor-in-chief of Indian Express, Shekhar Gupta, he conducts this interview and he's a man of integrity. And he normally interviews presidents, prime ministers, and celebrities of a very high level. And he's a man who you can trust. But before I conducted the interview, I saw to it that I spoke to him. And one week before he conducted the interview, he came from Delhi and he spoke to me for more than an hour. And when we interacted, I asked him that after you record this program, which will be talk show while walking, walk the talk, I asked him that will it be shown completely or will you edit it? He said it will be unedited. You can take from me my word that 99% be unedited, maybe a little bit here or there if you have to, you know, fit in the time duration. So he gave me the word that he will not edit. And you see to it that my view is not altered. So because he gave this word to me and I checked up his background and I trusted my colleague, I agreed for the interview, which he came to Bombay again from Delhi, and we had the talk on the Verli sea face, where it was again for approximately one hour, with the ads, it was approximately 45 to 50 minutes. And I believe it was the best experience 
that I had with the Indian TV channels. And I trust that Mr. Shekhar Gupta, he's a man of his word. And when I saw the interview, I was very happy. He did not edit anything. He did not change my view. Though, the same questions that were so challenging were asked by him. He gave me chance to clarify. I gave my point of view. And believe me, he was a man of his word. He did not edit anything. And he kept it as it is. And that's the reason I liked that show. And that show, next day after it was telecast for the first time, it came as a full page article on all 21 or 22 editions of Indian Express throughout India. So really that was, besides coming on the television satellite channel, it even came as an article, a full page article in all the editions of Indian Express. That's really courageous. And uh, that's what makes India in a one way very great, you know, when you have courageous people like Shekhar Gupta presenting various viewpoints for what they are, whether the Islamic viewpoint, whether it's the Maoist viewpoint, whether it's the communist, and difference. And we have to really congratulate him on that. Before we ask Dr. Zakir Naik himself about the program, his comments, his introspection, I would like to present the feelings, the comments, the analysis from the hundreds of emails that we have received, mostly from the NDTV website itself and many from the Facebook as well as a few from the other websites before our audience. Let us see how they feel about it. And of course, we have amongst us a panel of enlightened people on this topic breaking the stereotype, Muslim identity and popular culture, who have strong opinions of the subject. Many brothers here behind me, on my right, on my left. Uh, we'll take questions from them to get their comments before we move on to the session of Dr. Zakir Knight himself giving his expert comments. I would prefer to verbatim put forward before all of you and our audience the email comments verbatim without as a moderator manipulating any of the words they have written so that I'm not charged of the uh, critical comment uh, maybe you cut and chopped off and didn't give an adequate meaning so s kindly excuse me if some of the spellings or the sentence construction might not be very appropriate but it's up to the situation that we present them as we receive them. I begin with short comments which we received in large quantities. Comments like from Tahur Razia, Dr. Zakir Naik, we are waiting for your sequel. Jazakallah Khair. From Manzoor Ahmad, give answers to all of that questions in Peace TV. I was upset to see you in debate. One hour is not enough for that debate. We had uh, in the earlier instance itself, a long comment from uh, one brother, Imran Ali. I would uh, urge your patience to hear his comments, which I found very introspective. The moment I heard Dr. Zakir Naik is taking part in the NDTV talk, we the people, I made myself available to see how this time Barkha Dutt is going to sideline the arguments of a renowned personality. Well, I forgot that there is a level of dishonesty from her side using which she can sideline just about anyone. As expected, he was not given enough chance to speak and the focus was completely on Shah Rukh Khan of Bollywood. Not just that, second person who got the chance to speak more was Karan Johar. Dr. Zakir Naik needs to understand that such shows are meant to just punch each other's arguments with a single liner. One cannot try to explain big concepts in just a few seconds. Although his statements were bold, huge and true, too much of noise pollution sidelined them to some extent. To top this, Barkha Dutt, as expected, did not give fair time to Dr. Zakir Naik. This was clearly evident. But hold on, that's Dr. Zakir Naik. He just doesn't walk away without really sparking a thought process in people's mind, irrespective of how much time he's given. And as I thought, he did the same. If you carefully observe his statements, they tickled the brain of the viewers who would later go and check its authenticity. 
He knew there were millions of people watching the show, including viewers who don't watch Peace TV. And he took this as a golden opportunity to ignite the spark of reinvestigating the 9-11 attack, which was the origin of this entire concept of terrorism and Muslims getting stereotyped. He clearly informed there were 75 DVDs released of top American analysts and professors who proved that 9-11 was an inside job. He also quoted two websites names before Barkhadat cut him off. He quoted HTTP 911truth.org and one more site name which slipped my mind. People would surely go back and check these and hence find out the truth for themselves. So even though time given to him was not fair, he completed his job. He made the following punchlines. There is nothing called moderate or liberal Muslim. There is only practicing Muslim, partially practicing Muslim and non-practicing Muslims. It is the duty of a Muslim to tell others about the truth of Islam. Blaming Osama bin Laden or Taliban to be terrorists based on CNN and BBC versions is wrong and unfair. It is important to give fair hearing to such allegations and check the truth before blaming someone to be a terrorist. The videos shown are nothing but morphed, which generally the media is good at. 9-11 was an inside job and cannot be performed by Arabs. Physical appearance, beard, cap, etc. do not come under the 70 major sins of Islam. So there are more important things over and above the physical appearance in Islam. But to follow complete Islam, physical look also is important. These statements were more than enough to make people think twice about their stance. Shah Rukh himself was carefully listening to these arguments and looked impressed. That's my observation. Maybe I'm wrong. Also, he boldly spoke out the truth without fearing anyone. Unlike others, his confidence showed his trust on Allah and how he can go to any limit to speak the truth without fearing anything. Based on this email on the website by Imran Ali, we had responses which are interesting to of one or two other brothers. Mustafa Hussain responds, May peace, mercy and blessings of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Today, I happened to see the program with the people in which all the Bollywood people were there, along with Brother Zakir. And I'm totally unhappy to tell that the media once again played double standards. Barkhadat, supposed to be a generalist, forgot the rights of time allotment. Many questions asked to Zakir Bhai were given only maximum 30 seconds to answer, whereas others were given two to three minutes. All the answers to the questions were interrupted by others to cut down Brother Zakir's answers and get it out of context. Just see the double standards of the media. I request all the people reading this message to stand up and do the best to stop this evil. As there is a Sahih Hadith that whoever sees the evil around him should stop with his hand. If not, then tongue. If not, at least by the heart. This is the lowest level of Iman. According to me, these media people have cheated Zakir Bhai or else he wouldn't have accepted those sort of rules. However much people try to suppress Islam, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will grow more than that, inshallah. This comment was followed by another brother, Brother Naveed. He says, Allah is always with the truth. This media themselves show that they were wrong and not true people. As Allah said, truth stands out clear from falsehood. Though Brother Zakir Naik was not given chance, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the world through their channel how patient he was and peaceful to tolerate their injustice. If Shah Rukh Khan and others want to lead their lives according to their perspective without following the rules of Allah, they are at loss and not realizing it now. But when the truth will come in front of them, 
Till that time, it will be very late for them to tell now, I want to be a practicing Muslim. They may live a wealthy and famous life in this world, but what will be their fate after they die? Not thinking? Maybe Allah gave hidayah to all humankind to walk on the straight path and give Brother Zakir Naik more knowledge and power to stand firm for Islam and protect him always. Ameen. All our prayers are with him. To this, there's a response from a true Indian Muslim. That's how he calls himself. If anyone should be downcast out there, it should be Dr. Zakir. He supposedly is a learned scholar and knows the ins and outs of Islam, or so he says. He says Osama is not responsible for the 9-11. He's spreading a wrong word again, and that's a bad move, as he has many followers. I'm sorry, but I beg to defer on this. Websites, journals, media might say what they want, but a person's words can be altered. What attire is Dr. Zaki dressed in? Why does he pose for photos in a suit? Why not wear the dress of the Arabs when he proclaims to go all out on Islam? Considering this man has so many followers, he shouldn't spread a wrong word saying Taliban, Osama, etc. wasn't responsible for 9-11. That's absolutely wrong. I don't go by what CNN, BBC or any other biased channels have said, but by the people themselves who have taken ownership of what's happened. I don't think anywhere in our religion has something been mentioned as killing the innocent to prove a point. In fact, no religion teaches that. So again, I wonder what these extremists were playing at. The fact that he perceives that Taliban and Osama aren't responsible for 9-11 doesn't go down well with the audience. More judgments about Islam are made by the general public thanks to this hero. It is very easy for us to sit in one safe country, state, and enjoy the luxuries of living it up. Go try living in Congo, Mozambique, Iraq, Zaire, etc. The extremists from other religions will massacre you. Extremism in any form and any religion is nasty. It's an evil to society. It should be suppressed by doing anything in excess, even a fruit of Jannah can turn into poison. By writing this mail, I didn't mean to hurt anyone's sentiments. I'm sorry if I have. Instead, I want to just reach out to all of you in my own little way to tell you that although I'm not a five times namazi, I do have certain values in me that I believe are in line with what Islam preaches. I'm sure all of you are far better pious and balanced Muslims than me. I firmly believe that in my own little way, I will try to make people change their wrong perception about Islam by projecting Islam to be tolerant, humanity respecting religion. Cheers, I and P.S. Barkha or nobody else was being biased. If anyone is biased, it is Dr. Zakir. Come on, it's a freaking debate where there will be differences of opinion, not one tracked conversation. Brothers and sisters, you'd have noticed we have had some positive comments come critical. This was one of the comments which was critical of the earlier statements. I'm presenting the various viewpoints in a balanced format before all of you, so you appreciate the kind of responses we are getting to the program. Some positive, some neutral, some critical. Then we have a response to this email on the same site by Sarfraz Ali Khan. Walaikum assalam to all who wish me and assalamu alaikum for others to join later. This is in response to true Indian Muslim had said about the show. As my brother has said, he doesn't have to go to the CNN or BBC to check whether Osama planned the 9-11 attacks. If he did not see it on the media channels, then where did he see it and on which channel he saw that Osama took ownership or which newspaper did he read in? See, I'm not supporting Osama. If he has done it, we condemn. But if he has not, then brother, just on the basis of suspicion, 50,000 Afghanis were killed. I would like to ask you, have you seen loose change? If you have not, then see it. This documentary has not been done by any Muslim. 
it has been done by an American. And you will see that the Taliban speaking in English, though you might not understand Arabic, they ask for a proof from the Americans that Osama was behind it. And they said, if they provide it, then they themselves will hand over Osama. This telecast was just shown once on the news channels. And after that, it was never shown. Brother, you said go to Iraq, Zaire, Congo. Brother, I would like to just wear the Muslim attire and go to Assam. The Ulfa is going to butcher you like anything. They are specially trained to kill Muslims. 749 confirmed attacks. Guess what Zakir Naik did in his full attire, gave a public speech. Alhamdulillah, this is the power of Islam, to walk on the way of Allah. If you are not doing your duty, don't ask others to stop doing dawah. I appreciate that you are trying to teach others in your own sweet way. But what about the rest who would teach them? This man runs a channel which is viewed by over 70 million people. It has outbeaten God TV. Brother, our job is to deliver the message, not to convert them, so that on the judgment day you can give the shahada that you delivered his message to them. But at least try. And who knows? You might open the doors of heaven for someone. And this man has opened the doors to heaven for hundreds of people. May Allah give peace and show all of us the right path. That was a long and interesting discussion and comments on this article initiated by Imran Ali. We have brother Manoj Mishra, a non-Muslim, who has given this interesting comment. It's strange that a person of Dr. Zakir Naik's caliber and fame, an expert in the field of comparative religion, is not given time to speak, but instead people like Soha Ali, Shah Rukh Khan and lesser known Kabir Khan is given all the time to speak on issues which they hardly know. Let the specialist of that field speak out rather than novices of the field. Yes, if Soha or SRK or Kabir Khan or Salman Khan speak about films, it's okay. Though I am a Hindu and have seen Dr. Zakir Naik speaking on Peace TV and debating live around the globe on the various topics of comparative religion and related issues, I can tell you he is uncomparable. Barkha, by not giving time to Dr. Naik, has done great injustice to the stature of the person. Dr. Naik is Dr. Naik. Dr. Naik should never come to any TV debate where he is not allowed to speak or express his views. Thanks. Thanks. Humayun Kabir says, I have watched the videos. Dr. Zakir Naik should not have gone there. Nobody was stopped before they finished talking. But Dr. Naik was stopped every time when he was about to finish his explanation. If you ask an engineer to help a cancer patient, what will happen? I feel sorry for Dr. Zakir Naik again. Allah helps us all. Sajjad Ahangar says, It was ridiculous to listen to some people who talked about things of which they had no idea whatsoever. And each one tried to formulate a definition for Islam just to fit his or her practicing of the religion, if they do any. It was equally disgusting to see Barkhan never letting Dr. Zakir speak on anything. He was the most knowledgeable person on the podium, but sadly made a mute spectator. We have a non-Muslim sister, name is Kirti Mishra. She says, we the people is not representative and totally undemocratic. We means Barkha and a leftist friend who show and talk their biased opinions and a majority of the people's opinion is sidelined. What a mockery of neutral journalism. We have another non-Muslim brother, Vijay Lugani, who says, more we discuss about minority communities, more we create problems for them. Everybody in our country should feel equal to each other. Nobody should be suspicious to each other. If somebody does or act against the law, the law should take its course. SRK was best in discussion. Before I go on with the further comments, 
I would like to throw open the floor for comments from our learned brothers, our audience collected here today. We thank you for your patient listening to these uh, long comments and initiation of understanding of this topic, TV talk shows and analysis. May I request the brothers who would like to put forward their comments first and later on any question. Uh, we'll allow questions later on to Dr. Zakir. I would like your comments regarding the TV talk shows. Yes, brother. Well, my observation and comment on the program of NDTV 24 by 7 was that uh, Dr. Zakir Naik was the only person out of the eight speakers who did not interject any speaker. And all the others in the panel continuously kept on interjecting. The most out of them was uh, Alec and Kabir. In fact, Kabir interjected Dr. Zakir Naik at least three times. It was as though he was asked to cut short whenever he was about to speak. And if you notice that uh, Dr. Zakir Naik kept raising his hands for about more than 75% of the time of the entire program, and what was shown on the TV was just that raising once or maybe twice. So the program was definitely edited over there. What I would say is that Dr. Zakir Naik uh, was the only person out there who was following the rules of the program, like a true Muslim, in spite of him being sidelined for the entire program. Thank you, Jazakallah. Any brother? Any comments here? Yeah? Yes, brother. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, after uh, I watched the program, uh, I feel that uh, Barkha that she made it clear that she did not want Dr. Nayak to clear his viewpoints. And she purposely, she asked the controversial question of Osama bin Laden. And when Dr. Nayak, he tried to clear that by saying that uh, we can base our opinions on the news of BBC and CNN. So she cut him down and uh, she disagreed with him. Whereas on the other side, when uh, Karan Johar, he narrated an incident which inspired him to make the movie My Name is Khan. And he said that he saw a bunch of people, a bunch of educated people. Some of them were even uh, passed out from Oxford University. And he said that they were saying bad things about Islam. And Karanjo said that how can someone go against the Muslim community just basing their opinions on some information which the New York Times gives or the media or the news. At that time, Barkhadat, she agreed with Karanjo. So over here we see the double standards of Barkhadat. One side, she disagreed with Dr. Naik, and the other side, she agreed the viewpoint of Karan Johar. So, I being a fan of Dr. Naik, I feel very offended that uh, Dr. Naik did not get a chance to clear his viewpoints. And uh, I really look forward that uh, Dr. Naik uh, comments on this uh, issue. Yeah. Inshallah, we'll ask uh, Dr. Zakir. But before that, we'll put the floor open for more comments from our audience. Any brother? Yes, brother. Uh, can we have your name, you know, in profession before you put forward your question? Uh, my name is Mohsin Khan and uh, I'm a freelancer. When I got to know that Dr. Nayak had been to We The People show with Barkhadat and Shahrukh Khan, I just bombarded it on the internet like anything. I had a SMS group, Facebook, fan pages and all, and I bombarded it like anything. I know a guy from Pakistan, his name is Farid Ahmed. He told me that, are you sure Dr. Nayak is going to come on NDTV? Because I've sent lakhs of messages on Pakistan so that people will be watching it. So I said, yeah, this is why I've got to know and there is surety. Uh, but after watching this program, it was like, oh my God, why Dr. Zakir Nayak even accepted it? Like, you know, in the whole one hour program, just for two, three minutes, though, I, I, Alhamdulillah, Dr. Zakir Nayak made a point and did pass on the message. Like, the last message was given, the Muslim should know how to reply in the media. Alhamdulillah. He made a point and I feel like people will be keep hunting him. Like, on the internet, on YouTube, here and there. Alhamdulillah, I feel Allah is the best planner and Inshallah, it will de definitely benefit us. And Jazakallah for this program. Inshallah, I hope this will clear many questions which arise on the lakhs and millions of people around the world. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, brother. Any last comment here before I put forward some questions to Dr. Zakir? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aman. I saw the entire program from um, A to Z, and the whole program was a total mess. I feel Barkhadat was not able to handle it well, and according to me, the MTS vessel made the most noise, especially that person, what's his name is? Kabir. Kabir. Unknown person, never heard of him. Who and uh, under what authority he came to speak on Islam? Thank you. 
Uh, Jazakallah, brothers, for your kind comments. Uh, now I think we have some comments and responses from Dr. Zakir uh, to some of the queries raised here, as well as some of the questions. You know, so many hundreds and hundreds of questions we received. Uh, what I thought would be the right format is to put club some of the questions on the same theme and the, on the same uh, context together, five or six questions. And I'm sure Dr. Zakir was the kind of memory as he'll remember all of them and try to do justice to them. I read out some of the questions you know we received, uh, either on the website, sometimes on the NDTV website, some on the Facebook, and some by email received the IRF itself. Harun Hassan, he asked, Dr. Zakir, I'm very much disappointed you should not have attended such a show. Sayyid Usaid Ahmad Rezwi, he says, I really like a sentence for Dr. Zakir in that program, irrespective of what happened, he says, there is nothing like moderate Muslim or full Muslim. It is just practicing or not practicing Muslims. But I still think Dr. Naik shouldn't have attended this. We have brother Abrar Khan who says, Assalamu alaikum. I didn't understand why the hell Mr. Naik visited the show conducted by few I can't say that word, yeah? dash holes, where he was not allowed to speak and where image of Islam has been liberalized and put with wrong picture. Does a person with full of knowledge should attend that kind of programs or functions? Then there is Abrar Khan, he says, Wassalam, I too personally respect Mr. Naik a lot and I praise him all the time. But what he done was a very embarrassing decision. And uh, lastly, I put forward this question of Brother Fayyaz War. He says, I also agree, Dr. Zakir shouldn't have dialogue with Barkha. She knows nothing of economy, religion, statesmanship, culture. I was upset to see some people have just superficial knowledge of Islam and world. And they just say rubbish like SRK and Sohali. It was partly publicity stunt for my name is Khan. Ubaid Muhammad, I am wondering how Dr. Zakir Naik, sir, accepted invitation for this show. I request, sir, not to attend such programs. So we directly throw all these suggestions, questions, the perspective of the many audiences who look up to Dr. Zakir himself. I think he is the best person to answer them, not we all. So let's get over to Dr. Zakir himself. Yes, Dr. Zakir, feel free to comment on whatever has been spoken till now. This question, why did I attend this talk show, We the People, on any TV? This has been asked to me a few hundred times in the past two weeks, personally, on email, on telephone, from people in Bombay, from people in different parts of India, from people in different parts of the world. And many people told me, those who know me personally, that after the show you had with Farooq Sheikh, after seeing the deceit, how did you attend this show? And after the show that I attended with Farooq Sheikh on Marth, though I don't blame him, I blame the producer, I always had a condition. As I mentioned earlier, I received a few hundred invitations in the past couple of years. A few hundred, maybe a thousand, from different channels in India, asking me to attend TV talk shows, panel discussions, chat shows. And I put the condition that it should either be live and unedited, or let us have our own camera crew of at least six to seven cameras to shoot the talk show. So that if you edit something, we'll show it live on our channel. And when the first time I received the invitation for the talk show on NDTV with the people, I wasn't there in the country, so it was refused. When they again approached, then I put the condition that we want to have our cameras on the talk show and it was agreed by the coordinator who was coordinating and calling me for the show. So my manager, Magbul, he said, if you allow us to have our cameras on the talk show, then Dr. Nike will come. And he said, that won't be a problem. He readily agreed. So I said, no problem. If they do some editing, then surely we can add the unedited version on the other channels. So that was the reason that I decided to attend this talk show. 
But unfortunately, just one day before the talk show, the coordinator told me, that, Brother Zakir, you know, we're having the program in Taj lands and when I spoke to him personally, and the place is so small, we're already having our six cameras, and you being a man of media, you know how difficult it is to accommodate more cameras. I knew this is just an excuse. I'm a man of media. In the Taj land, I can accommodate more than 12 cameras. This place is smaller than Taj lands, and here we have nine cameras. Taj lands, five-star hotel, is multiple times bigger than this. When here we can have nine cameras, why can't we have it there? So I knew it was just an excuse, but then asked a condition that will you give me an unedited version of the complete show on a digital beta cam format or DV cam, whichever you're shooting on. I'm not aware whether NDTV shoots on digital beta cam or DV cam, but we normally shoot only on digital beta cam or something better. So he told me, yes, Dr. Zaknak, that I can do. I'll give you an unedited version immediately after the show, which is of broadcast quality. And with this condition, I attended the show. But alas, when I inquired with other people, when the show got over, and when we asked for the unedited version, they said, okay, we'll give it to you very shortly, you know, maybe after telecast. We said, fine, that's fine, after telecast, so that we don't utilize the material. Then after the show was telecast, when my manager inquired for the copy, they gave after several days, that also on DVD. And it wasn't an unedited version, it was the same edited version which was shown on the television. What is the use of giving that? We already have recorded that. And initially when I attended the program, people told me that Barkadat, you know, she's very challenging, she's outspoken, and she has a ways in trying to make a person say what she wants to say. But I said, no problem, since the show will be unedited with me, there's not a problem. And with that intention, I went for the show. And though I know that she did give me less time, initially the coordinator asked me to come on the show. I asked how many people are there. So he told me, there is Shah Rukh Khan, Karan Johar, Alec Padamsi, and he said, Maulana Madni from Kerala. So I said, Maulana Madni from Kerala? I don't know any Maulana Madni from Kerala. I said, I want to know the full name. Then he said, no, no, I'm sorry. It is Maulana Mahmood Madni from Delhi. Oh, I know the person, mashallah, he's a close friend of mine. So I said, fine, since there are four panelists and I'm the fifth one, seeing the situation, the more the number of panelists, the less chance a person gets, even if it's divided. But unfortunately, when I went on the show, I saw there were additional three. Besides the four he mentioned, there was Najib Jung. I met him for the first time. The Vice Chancellor of Jamia Miller from Delhi. And Kabir, who I was told is a film producer or film director, <coughs> I'm not sure. And so Ali Khan. So three additional panelists. So it became eight. But when I went on the show, I realized that even the time that is given to me, if we feel divided, it will be less. But though the show, according to me, I was given less time, but in spite of the other things, I said, fine, at least I made a few points. And even if these are shown, there will not be a problem. But when I saw the show one week later on, I was shocked. I was utterly shocked that my answers were edited. And especially those answers which were critical, and would put me on the wrong side. That's the time I said that the intention of the producer of the program and the intention of the moderator has to be verified. Because the answer that I gave on Osama bin Laden, most of the people who see me on the television, they know it very well. I don't want to repeat the answer. But when I mentioned that irrespective, whoever has done the 9-11 attack, whether it's George Bush or Osama bin Laden, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, whoever has done it should be condemned. That part was edited. So when you edit a major portion of it, the act has to be condemned. If you don't know the person, you cannot blame a person without proof. So I condemn the act irrespective of whoever did it. So when that part is edited, it shows as though I am a supporter of Osama bin Laden. I am neither a supporter, neither I am against him because I don't know. And as brother rightly said, when I am telling I don't know because I cannot base my view, on BBC and CNN, Barkada says, come on, Dr. Zakir, as I'm telling a lie. <laughs> Same thing Karan Johar says, that he got angry at about six non-Muslims, three of them who are investment bankers, two of them Oxford University graduates, when they speak against Muslims, and he said, how can you blame the whole community just on news, got on New York Times and news channel, she says, yeah, yeah. So this shows the double standards, and rightly brother said, 
that when she is agreeing with Karan Johar who says you cannot base your views on New York Times and news channels and when I say I cannot base my views of Osama bin Laden based on BBC and CNN, she immediately interjects and she's cutting me down. So this shows the intention that the moderator was biased. She was not truthful. So that's the reason the whole show, what I thought at least I'll make my point. I did not expect her to be so unjust and the producer that they cut my answers. And they did not do it once, they did it several times. One more answer when I gave, when Najib Jung, when he said something, and I said that counseling is allowed, and I said that if a person doesn't have drug, and I tell him don't have drug, then the person will agree with me. This part they should. But when I said later on, that I being a doctor, if I am a doctor, and I give advice to a patient, because that person considers me to be an expert in the field of medicine, then people agree with me. When someone considers me to have knowledge on Quran, but when I give the advice on Quran, they don't follow. So this portion of doctor's analogy was edited. So why do they edit? So this shows that to attend a talk show, you may be an expert, but if the intentions of the moderator and the producer are not right, even the best person to appear on a talk show, he can be showed on the other side. He can be showed in a negative way. Because as I said, you can edit, you can cut. Therefore, the best is to go on a live talk show, which is aired without editing. Or you have a moderator and a producer of the show who are not biased and truthful and honest. Like example, the NDTV interview done by Shekhar Gupta. I really admire the person. He may have disagreed with some of my views, but he was honest. So looking back at it, because we put the conditions, I went on the show. And when I put these conditions to many other channels, they refused, saying we will not allow. But NDTV, at least this show, we the people, I think they went a step further by saying we agree. And one day before disagreeing and promising us to give an unedited version, which they have not given. So I feel the intention, what I thought, I trust in NDTV. As a whole, I don't blame them, because the earlier program they had of mine was fantastic. But this may be the producer is different and the model is different. They aren't the same as Shekhar Gupta. So, but looking back again, when I saw the show, I was initially very disgusted that I should not have gone on the show. Later on, I told my staff, at least take my portion and let me see how much I've spoken. So one of my staff took out all the portion and it was six and a half minutes. Six and a half minutes! I was happy. But then I realized in that six and a half minutes, two and a half to three minutes, was spoken by Barakhadat. I spoke for only 207 seconds. I did a calculation. Coming to less than three and a half minutes. And this is what I felt. But when I saw the portion of my portion only, even if they've edited it, yet, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, Chapter 17, verse number 81. When truth is hurled in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. When I saw the emails, and I read the emails that came on comments on NDTV, by Muslims and non-Muslims, I was shocked. Believe me, I was shocked. Out of the emails I read, two-thirds were either telling the Dr. Zakina did not get enough time, either they are speaking against Barakhadat, that means on the positive side, that they could see through, maybe because they know my answers or they're aware of my speeches. So I was happy that two-thirds of them, the emails that I read, because maybe they've seen these people, maybe my fans or whatever it is, or they've seen me, the non-Muslims, the Muslims. That is the reason they did not appreciate the way it was conducted. Out of the balance one-third, half of them were neutral, half of them were critical, saying that, see, Zakir here, you know, he didn't get a chance, so they're happy about it. But overall, I feel, even what they have done, as Imran Ali rightly said, the message, the major point for put across, what is the definition of a Muslim? There's nothing like moderate Muslim, either practicing, partially practicing, or non-practicing Muslim. So these points about the various things that are spoken in the media, at least I made a point, and those who were intelligent got it. So Alhamdulillah, irrespective of what have happened, I feel, Whatever happens, happens for good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best 
to make your message spread. Jazakallah khair, uh, Dr. Zakir, for your elucidative comments on what all we received by email and the comments from our brothers here. We continue on with this discussion on TV talk shows and analysis. I present some more of the emails and website comments we have received. There's one brother, Zahid Malik. He says, NDTV wasted precious time of Dr. Zakir. There is Waqas Sheikh Muhammad who says, Dr. Zakir Naik had too much patience. I would have said directly to the host that you did not give me enough time to speak in front of everyone. As far as that comment is concerned, that you did not give me enough time to speak has been told to me many, many of my friends said that Dr. Naik, you should have said on the show that please don't edit this. You should have said on the show and you have not given me enough time. But maybe that would have been edited too. That's correct. So that's what <laughs> that's I said, different. that if I would have said that, that means I'm falling in the trap. Because I know the media, so that person being a no wise, many of my friends they told me, you should have openly said in the show that don't edit this portion and give me enough time. So what they would have done, they would have showed that portion, that don't edit this portion and give me enough time, and they edited the other portion. So it would have looked that they are very honest. They are even showing that portion where I mentioned don't edit, though editing other parts. And even showing that portion give me enough time. So what we realize is that me being a man of the media, I did not fall into the trap. I didn't make that comment. But these people may not be knowing how editing can be done in the post-production. That's the reason I do appreciate the comment. But I being a man of the media, I avoid falling into the trap which they have laid. We continue with the comments. The next brother, uh, Brother Muhammad Iqbal says, Why don't you call only Zakir Naik Bhai to know about Islam? He will let you know everything, whatever you all want. This is my challenge. Inshallah, he'll answer all your questions with authentic sources. So let's see what NDTV do next. The sister Tahira Sarwar who says, you people just wasted Dr. Zakir Naik's precious time. I think a similar kind of comments we received from many of the uh, websites and emails. And then Adil Ayub says, that was expected. Filmmakers, government employed clergies were trying to explain their own Islam, while as Dr. Naik was totally sidelined. That was quite clearly a drama which was manipulated professionally by Barkhadat. Then we have Abdullah Baisa who says, Brother Zakir is a wise person that he attended and he was smiling all the time. May Allah protect him and give hidayah to others. Amen. We have brother Mushafik Sultan. He says, this program was a campaign against modesty and a campaign for immodesty and rebellion against religion. A useless program. They bought Dr. Naik to increase their viewership and they all joined to pounce on him. Sayyid Ahmad says, don't judge on what you see. How do you know that she hardly knows anything? We should not speak about others when we were not sure that what Dr. Naik said yesterday. Sobu Monu says, he's a man of wisdom and knowledge. Dr. Zakir Naik is the most knowledgeable scholar of this era. His personality and knowledge about Islam and other religions is so concrete and authentic that everyone is compelled to listen to him and have put so many people around the globe on sirat e mustaqim And we have candid comments from Brother Adil Azim. He says, Hi Barkha, I was a fan of you, but you let me down. You were biased. Were Dr. Zakir Naik and Maulana Mandni called just for publicity of the show? They were not given a chance to speak. You want to know about Islam and Muslims from people who are not experts in Islam? If you think that Shah Rukh Khan and So Ali Khan represent Muslims of India, then I must insist you are wrong. I would reiterate the Hadith Asim mentioned Adrat Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha narrate that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that time will also come upon the people when the truthful will be condemned as liars and the liars will be regarded as truthful. People with dishonest occupations will be regarded as upright people while upright people will be condemned as criminals. People will come forth uncalled to give evidence for a fee. 
and people will take oaths. False, without it being called for. One suggestion, try to know about Islam from Quran and experts. We have Sister Shamma goes saying, your program, we the people, was useless, not worth watching. Dr. Zakir Naik was not given any chance to speak and was deliberately interrupted. Barkha was really not interested in knowing about the Muslim identity. All she was busy was in cutting off Dr. Zakir Naik's comments and not letting him complete his point of view. All the focus was more given to SRK. It was a completely a promotional platform and event built by NDTV to promote his film, My Name is Khan. 90% of the time was given to fools who don't know what Islam is. We have interpret comments from Sister Shumaila Siddiqui who says, the show was totally unfair. Barkha didn't give much chance to Dr. Zakir to speak. It was more for the publicity of My Name is Khan than knowing about the Muslim's identity. Barkha interrupted Dr. Zakir again and again and didn't let him clear his points. When Shah Rukh has himself said that he doesn't know much about Islam, then it is foolish to ask him anything about Islam. It's like you are asking a driver about heart problem. Even in the end, Dr. Zakir was not given chance to make the final statement. Barkha skipped Dr. Zakir and moved towards Soha. Then by themselves raised the issue of a beard and a cap and then Shah Rukh said that we should not go for how does a Muslim look like we should go for how does he feel. So if you didn't want to know that how should Muslim look like, then why did you people raise the issue of a beard and a cap? Again a foolish act. It was the waste of the precious time of Dr. Zakir. That show was useless. We have another sister, Reshma M, who says, I was truly disappointed from this discussion. Having renowned people like Dr. Naik and not being able to bring his points to the audience was disappointing. And when he did speak, he was sadly cut off. He's, after all, a well-learned scholar. But SRK and SOA and likewise people were given more than necessary spotlight of the whole talk. To the extent that they look like the show was more based on MNIK and such matter and what the actor thought of what should be done and what not. The show was a big disaster and all that they did succeed in was to reconfirm my belief that how much ever people try to be open-minded, they can never accept Muslims with their whole package. Whether it be the skull cap and hijab or just merely verses of the Quran. And yes, I agree with Dr. Naik. There are either practicing Muslims or just plain hypocrites. And as far as hijab goes, all I have to say to everyone, who's got a problem, back off. Those were candid comments from some of our uh, websites, especially the NDTV one, as well as Facebook. We begin this continuing session with questions from the audience. Our brothers collected here to Dr. Zakir Naik. Our brothers have seen various talk shows, especially the last one that Dr. Zakir appeared on NDTV. We would like you, out of your experiences, your practical understanding, if you have any question as far as understanding what talk shows are all about, this is your opportunity to ask Dr. Zakir. Feel free, feel open, do ask. We have Dr. Zakir to answer your questions. Yes, brothers. Yes, brother. I would like to ask uh, Zakir Bhai whether these uh, news channels aren't for TRPs and for money and uh, they want the populist opinion which uh, uh, will attract more audiences. But I said, not only the news channels, most of the channels, they mainly see to it, they get uh, more TRP. And having this view of having more TRP is not wrong. But showing a wrong view to have more TRP, that is wrong. To see to it that you get more viewership on a channel is a good intention. But to show a wrong impression, to increase your viewership, that is wrong. So most of them, because as you rightly said, 
that most of the channels are commercial channels. And the intention to start a channel is to earn money. So many a time, they go against the truth just to see to it that the viewership increases. Yes, Sunny. Brother. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Before I put forward my question, I would like to make a comment on the program. After watching the program, We the People, I realized, as a fan of Dr. Zaki Naik, that what a mess it could make if we ask the opinion of every person, namesake Muslim, about Islam and the Muslims. And it has reaffirmed my faith in the verse of the glorious Quran where it says, if you do not know, ask those who know. That's right. Coming to my question. During the course of the talk, Barkha that threw a question to the panelists that most of the Muslims have become image conscious and they have given more concentration on wearing a skull cap, sporting a beard, and the Muslim woman wearing the hijab. And as usual, as Barkhadat was doing, she avoided your comments on this and she put forward to the other panelists that was Najib Jung. Brother Najib Jung said that most of the Muslims who wear the skull caps, sport a beard, and wear the niqab are less than a percent, which I strongly disagree with. I would like to have an enlightened answer by Dr. Zakir Naik on the same because I consider him to be an expert on Islam and comparative religion. Jazakallah. As far as the comment made by Najib Jung, that less than 1% of the Muslims in India wear this identity. The identity mentioned by Barakhadat, that the men wear a skull cap and a beard, and women wear the burqa. He said less than 1% in India wear this identity. And he also said that in my university, he is the Vice Chancellor of Jamia Amelia, he said that we have 20,000 students, girls and boys, and they aren't dressed up in skull cap or beard or burqa. Less than 1% from them wear this. I haven't been to Jamia Amelia. I don't know the percentage, but surely, as far as the Indian Muslims are concerned, I totally disagree with him. In my humble opinion, not that I've done research, but looking people around traveling throughout India, I feel those people who wear a beard, among the non-Muslims will be more than 1%. He was said Muslims. Among the non-Muslims in India and throughout the world will be more than 1%. He was said Muslims. Muslims, I would say, easily somewhere close to 25 to 30% minimum. I feel minimum from the Indian Muslims, 25-30% of the men would be keeping a beard. As far as the skull cap is concerned, maybe about, maybe close to 15-20% to wearing a skull cap. Both put together would surely be more than 10%. Both put together. Both put together, wearing together would be minimum 10%. And either of it, either a beard or a skull cap would be close to 35-40%. to 40%. So I totally disagree with Najib Jung on analysis. And he further said that it's only in India we got this from the Hindus when we pray, we wear a cap. This I agree, this thing that covering the head while prayer is more common in India, but it's not coming from the Hindus. Covering that is not compulsory, but it's the sunnah of the Prophet. And there are many hadith, you mentioned Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7 in the book of dress, in chapter number 16, where the Prophet covered his head. It's also mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7. Hadith number 5807, where the Prophet covered his head. And there are various other Sahih Hadith. It's a Sunnah. There's no Hadith showing that ever Prophet went outside with his head uncovered. Though it's not a farad in Islam, it's a Sunnah. So it is a part of the Muslim identity. And same with the beard. What I fail to realize that I don't know about Jami Hamilya. But I'm sure, though I have not been to Jami Hamilya, even there, the students, inshallah, if they are Muslims, would surely be more than 10 percent would either be having a cap or a beard or both. Majority students, I think, are non-Muslims in Jamia Millia. No, but he said because Muslims. Yeah. When we are talking about Muslims, the most students are non-Muslims. Therefore, I am saying among the Muslim students, among the Muslim students, I said I don't know what the percentage is. I haven't been to Jamia Millia. And to put the point across, even Najib Jung himself puts a beard. <laughs> so when you are asking, I say that at least. 35% to 40% have either one of them and if you call him whatever type of Muslim he is, he says he is a Muslim, so he has a beard. Why he has it, I don't know, but he has a beard. 